Good afternoon, everybody. March 21st, 2018, 12, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, we're going to take a break from these winter storms in the U.S. and pretty much the U.S. altogether because we're having a situation developing as we speak, both in the Indian Oceans, which basically, if you follow my mouse, comes up to about this part of Australia and then stays on the west coast of these islands here. So this would be the Indian Ocean, and then everything inside here would be considered the Pacific Ocean. Now, we have five different invests going on. We have Cyclone Marcus, which is almost a Category 5 if you measure it as a hurricane scale. Uh, we're talking currently 130 kilometers an hour, um, which is about 150 miles per hour, and it's expected to go up to 140 uh, kilometers, which would be pushing about 161 miles per hour before this thing starts to die down. As it moves south, um, it could move south into the area of Darling, uh, Darling Scarp, I believe it's called, down here in Australia. It could do some, it could cause some issues there, and certainly could cause issues along the coast here of Western Australia. So we're going to keep an eye on this big guy. This thing's huge. In fact, I was actually going to make a separate video for it alone. I still might. But uh, here you see it here. This is currently where it is, and it's kind of doing a bow effect, and it's going to ride down the uh, west side of the western area of Australia. Now, that's not it. That's not all that Australia has to deal with right now. We also have um, Invest, I believe this is 94P. Uh, yes, this one is 94P right here, uh, which is actually moving its way into the Gulf of uh, Carpentaria. Um, it's just south of Papua New Guinea, which is right here, and it is forming. It's expected to be a Category 3 by the time it makes landfall in the Gulf here, which will absolutely cause uh, major effects here on the Gulf. Storm surge, erosion, you name it, especially if this thing gets to that strength. Now, not only is it going to do that, but we're going to move forward in time in a second after I talk about these other two invests. Now, we also have... Invest 95P right here, which is near Vinatu and uh, Port Villa right now, and it's going to move down towards New Caledonia. Now, we still have to wait and see if this thing is going to develop into any sort of significant cyclone, but it is an invest right now, Invest 95P, uh, basically forming out of the Coral Sea right here. And then 94P here is in the Arafura Sea, which is right under uh, Papua New Guinea, just south of Papua New Guinea, and this is moving into the Gulf here. So we have one, two, three, four, which will more than likely be named here. I'm not sure what this one will do. And then our fifth one is actually a typhoon. Um, now this is a typhoon because it's in a different part of the Pacific Ocean. The cutoff line is basically right around here. Anything south of this are cyclones. And then north of this line here, um, basically typhoons. So this is actually moving upwards towards Tokyo into the East China Sea, which is up in this area, and then it kind of looks like it heads right at Tokyo. So we're going to move forward in time here and see how some of these develop and form. I'm going to back up to the 21st, which is current time. Here is Cyclone Marcus, very, very strong cyclone, uh, projected to reach Category 5 wind speeds, 161 miles per hour. Um, here is the 22nd. We begin to see Invest 94P form just under New, or uh, uh, Papua New Guinea, rather, and then we also see 95P uh, by Port Vila uh, and Venatu, rather, uh, forming here, and then this one again, unnamed, and then we have our typhoon here moving up into this direction. So let's move into the 23rd. Uh, you could see a little bit of southern movement towards the Gulf here, then the 24th, and this is where things are going to get interesting, especially for the area of northern Australia. Now, I want you to watch this cyclone and watch what it does over the next couple days. We're going to move into the 25th. It takes a left hook towards the central area of Australia. It then moves over land over central Australia towards the western area. And then look at this. Watch. It's going to almost come out and reform right at the Western Australia border, where the, the cutoff line is about right here. This is Western Australia, Central, and then Eastern. And then look at that. It reforms on this side. And then by the 30th, it could actually pick up enough wind speed to once again become a cyclone and possibly do some damage along the west side of Australia. And then by that time, these invests are cleared out. But then we also notice this typhoon has taken shape, and it looks like it's beelining right for Tokyo. So let's back up and watch that one. You can see how it hooks right into the East China Sea there, which is part of the Pacific Ocean. 
and it's, it does a move kind of like this, and then it likes to ride up this east coast of Tokyo here. We followed a couple cyclones earlier in the season, but this is pretty significant, guys. We got five different invests going on, including one way out here. Um, in fact, I got to back up, I think, to even see it. Here we go. Uh, this is also the Indian Ocean, but this one's beelining, it seems, down towards... Uh, an area that is not uh, very populated, let's just put it that way. So our main concerns right now are obviously Cyclone Marcus, which is a very strong cyclone, could cause um, damage along the west coast of Australia. And then we have Invest 94P, which ha uh, according to this website will be a Category 3 right about at the 24th on Saturday when it makes landfall. Now that timing will be different because of the time difference in Australia. So those of you that live in this area of Australia, please do the different times um, by uh, Eastern Standard Time. This is Saturday the 24th at 11 a.m. Excuse me, I just finished eating. Uh, <laughs> and then we have uh, Invest 95P, which will be uh, right at the north end of New Caledonia. Uh, after it passes Vanatu and Port Villa, uh, which could be named a cyclone as well. We just got to wait and see what happens with that. Now, as far as why these are, why this is a typhoon and why these are cyclones, I pulled up a picture for you. And this is how it works, guys. So basically, cyclones, typhoons, and hurricanes, they are all the same thing, except for the way they spin. Okay, if you're north of the equator, they spin in a counterclockwise motion this way. When anything's under the equator, they spin in a clockwise motion. Now that isn't really has to do with whether they're called cyclones or not because you can see here in the Indian Ocean, we could have cyclones north of the equator. They just spin in a different direction. Now uh, things can move up, they can move down. So it can be very confusing to people, but when it comes to the Atlantic hurricane season, which is starting June 1st, um, in my opinion, we will see our first tropical storm well before June 1st. Um, it's hurricanes because they spin in a certain motion. Um, the Earth's spin apparently has something to do with this. Some believe that's true, some don't. I'm not here to debate that. I'm just here to show you what the current facts are and why we call these things typhoons, cyclones, or hurricanes. So this is an interesting chart. You could just Google tropical cyclone distribution. Um, and you can see why this one we're looking at that's heading up the East China Sea right here is a typhoon because it's on the north side of the equator. This is the uh, Western Pacific Ocean. Those are typhoon territory. But one, two, three, four, and five. I'm not sure if this is even an invest yet. This may gain some momentum, but certainly Marcus is something to look out for. Marcus is a big storm. It's expected to weaken as it moves down into the cooler waters, but still may affect areas of Western Australia. And then obviously our next main concern, like I said, is 94P with the potential of being a Category 3 at landfall right here uh, in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, and then it moves west and it wants to ride the coast of the west side of Australia and possibly out into the Indian Ocean. So this thing originates in one sea and then moves out into the Indian Ocean. So this is uh, kind of a unique situation. Um, and then once again, guys, New Caledonia is dealing with 95P. And then we have another invest, which will more than likely be named shortly uh, down here. So this is actually Typhoon... 96W, which has the potential to be Category 3 by the end of the data we have here. Uh, you can see here, uh, it's not showing really Category 3 storm uh, movements here, but according to Tropical Tidbits, it does have that potential. So here is 15S Marcus, 130 kilometers, very, very fast cyclone, uh, very defined eye there. Uh, certainly what we look for in our hurricane season in the Atlantic Ocean as well. Here are some projected paths. You can see how uh, Learmonth also is could be at risk for this as far as storm surge and waves. Uh, the entire west, west area of Western Australia. And then we have Perth down here at the bottom, which may take almost a hit from this, depending on the uh, formation it still keeps as it moves on. It's hard to see on this screen here, but you could see here uh, uh, the next set of data. They're expecting this to go to 140 uh, kilometers. So uh, that's very significant. That's a fast storm. Very, very fast. Uh, gusts up to 170, which could be gusts of uh, around 180 miles per hour. Uh, very, very significant storm here. Some spaghetti plots for that storm. Now, this is the one... Sorry about that, guys. This storm, uh, Ilakayam, uh, however you want to say it, this is the one that's moving down into the uh, Arctic area. 
uh, which we don't really have to worry about. No one in the way of that one. And then as we move down here, we get to see some of the detail on 96W Invest. This would be our typhoon moving up into the East China Sea. Currently 20 kilometers, nothing really major here, but they are expecting it to form. Pressure is 1,003. And then as we just spoke about, uh, 94P Invest, which is going to be the Gulf of Carpentaria right down in the middle of Australia here, just under Papua New Guinea. Currently 15 kilometers, but again, they're expecting this to form. Uh, usually when they invest these things, they do tend to form into some sort of cyclones, 1,000 millibars as of right now. And then finally, uh, here are the spaghetti. Actually, let's see the spaghetti plots for this. Now you can see how it hooks into the Gulf here and then wants to cross over the middle areas of Australia and then move into the West Coast and then possibly reform here. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with that. And then finally, our 95P invest, which is uh, currently near Vanatu and Port Villa, which is moving down towards New Caledonia. Here are the spaghetti plots for that. A little bit all over the place. Uh, still worth watching. Uh, so anyway, Typhoon uh, Invest 96W uh, is heading towards Tokyo, Invest 95P heading towards New Caledonia, Invest 94P, p uh, Potential Category 3 Storm, Gulf of Carpentaria, Australia, and then our main guy, Cyclone Marcus, which is currently moving along the west coast of Australia, a little bit off into the ocean, the Indian Ocean there, but could potentially do some... Uh, damage uh, towards the bottom west areas of uh, Australia. So that's where we're at right now, guys. Uh, just so you know, here is the conversion we have, 140 kilometers, or knots rather. Oh my god, I've been saying kilometers. 94, uh, 140 knots. Uh, everything, every time I say kilometers, just change that to knots in the video. Very sorry about that. I gotta get up to speed on my cyclone study and get ready for hurricane season. But you can see easily that's 161 miles per hour, uh, and I'm using the scale for uh, the Sapphire Simpson Hurricane Scale to do our measurements because most of my subs are from America, but those of you that have been following my channel from other countries you do know or are, could be interested in this scale here. This is how we measure our hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see clearly right here that Marcus is already Category 4, expected to be a Category 5, uh, could exceed 156 miles per hour as we saw that 161 mile per hour number. All right, guys, so here we have it. Let's back up one more time and take a look at these things all over the Indian Ocean and the uh, Pacific Ocean, beginning on the 21st. Here is the 22nd. We begin to see 1, 2, 3, and 4 with the typhoon up here. And then by the 23rd, we have Marcus here. And then our uh, Gulf of Carpentaria cyclone moving south. Our other invest here, this will probably be an invest by then, and then we also see Typhoon taking shape. Here is the 24th, here is the 26th, 27th, 28th, our Typhoon is in full-blown Typhoon mode heading towards the East China Sea. Here is the 28th, 29th is when um, Invest 94P makes its way across Australia. So that's the 29th, that is about eight days from now, so we don't know exactly what's going to happen with that, we just got to keep an eye on it. But definitely a very significant situation going on in the Indian Ocean and the South Pacific and the West Pacific and the Pacific as a whole. And guys, we are very close to hurricane season, we are about 80 plus days I want to say. Uh, I will update that in the next video, but thank you for listening, guys. Uh, everyone stay safe, especially in Australia, New Caledonia, and then eventually uh, areas of Tokyo and the East China Sea. Thank you so much, guys. I'll be back later with another video uh, about our winter storms. I'm getting so tired of this stuff, guys. All right, take care. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.